over us? Yes, sweetheart. I do. Is there anything you want to say to them before we go? I love you, and I miss you every day. Why don't you go on ahead? I'll be there in a minute, okay? It's wrong to leave you here, Willie. Really. And I know that you and Kathy will look after each other. And no matter how far away I am, you will always be in my heart. I'll see you again. sister and her husband. Who are you going to visit? We're not visiting anyone. We're going to live with my grandpa and grandma. You're leaving home? My pa is the sheriff of Tetsford Junction. He got himself killed a couple years back. Gosh, I'm sorry to hear that. You're hot and thirsty. There's fresh churned buttermilk inside. All right. <laughs> oh. Welcome home, Missy. It's good to be home, Mama. I just wish I know. I know. All right, let's see what you do now. You move. Yeah, right. King. Uh, <laughs> somebody's been practicing. Yes, I have. Your father found you a house in town. It's small and it needs some work, but it's near the school and the rent is reasonable. Good. For well, my teacher's pay, I can't afford much. I really wish you'd reconsider staying with us. At least for a little while. Do you need the help, Mama? No. I really appreciate you and Papa wanting to help me and Maddie. But I need to stand on my own two feet right now. Maddie needs to see that even though his daddy's gone, he still has one parent strong enough to take care of him. The other day, 
Daddy asked me what color his father's eyes were. I couldn't remember. Daddy might forget details like that. But he won't forget the things his father did with him. Or the things Willie taught him. I'm starting to forget little things about Willie, too. Like that last morning, when we said goodbye. Did I kiss him? I, I think I did, but I don't remember. It's only been three years, Mama. Just like with Maddie, you'll remember the things that mattered. Like how much you and Willie loved each other. No one will ever love me that way again. And I will never love anyone else. I can't imagine being truly happy again. That's how I felt when my first husband died. And then I met your father. See, I feel if I were to love someone else, that I would be betraying Willie in some way. Willie would want you to be happy. It's gonna take a little bit of work, but I can help you out with that message. It's all right, Pa. It's gonna be just fine. Daddy, look what I found. It's our Christmas star. I promise you, Maddie, I will make this into a nice place. It won't be like home, though. Do you know what makes a house a home? No. Home is where you'll always have a place, where you will always feel loved, and where you will never, ever be alone. It might not seem like it now, Maddie, but... This place will come to feel like home. Come here. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. We thank you for the sun and the rain, which help nourish the crops and help them grow into sustenance for our minds and bodies. In wisdom, you have made them all. Amen. Amen. I have an announcement. I received this notice from the Children's Aid Society of New York, and it says, Wanted. Homes for children. A company of homeless children from the East will arrive on Friday. These children are of various ages and of both sexes, having been thrown friendless upon the world. We seek good homes with decent families who will love them as their own. Distribution of these children will take place right here at the church. I know I can count on all of you to open your hearts to these precious children of God. God bless you all. Pastor Joe. Well, I've heard a lot about you, Missy. Oh, well, good, I trust. Your father thinks the world of you. Seems we're neighbors. My husband and I are just two farms away from your new house. All right, see you tomorrow morning. Pastor? Oh, Mrs. Pettis. Morning, Sheriff. Thank you. We should miss you at Sunday services today. Come on now. Clara. He should be coming, honey. Well, that's his choice now. I know. I know. We'll see you. Bye. Sheriff Tyler couldn't be bothered to attend church again. Well, he's pretty busy keeping the peace. Happy Sunday. Nice to see you. We should be going, Mrs. Pettis. Well, it looks like your husband had a reason for not showing his face in church as well. Thank you. There is much work to be done on the farm, and we can't afford hired help. If my husband doesn't do the work, we don't eat come winter. Good day, ma'am. I'm Sheriff Tyler. Hello, Sheriff. I'm Mrs. LeHay. Yes, I know. Small town, word gets around. I heard about the new teacher. Well, what else have you heard? 
Well, your folks are Clark and Marty Davis, and you have a, a little boy. Maddie. Maddie. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, Mrs. LaHaye. You spoil him. Of course I do. It's my job as a grandma. So tell me more about this orphan train Pastor Joe was talking about. Now, Marty, you know you're not well enough to be chasing after a child. I will be soon. Well, for now, we're going to have to let other people handle that responsibility. Would you consider taking in one of those children? Yeah, Mom. Then I get to have a brother or sister. No. But all my friends have a bunch of brothers and sisters. But since Kathy died, I've had none. I'm sorry, Mama. It's all right, Maddie. It's good to talk about her. We don't want to forget her, right? Stand so close. But I'm scared, Lundy. I told you, get away from me. Folks don't want a brother and sister. Stop in and see how it was going. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming today. These children are putting their faith in the kindness of strangers like you. Let's begin with Alice Moore. Alice, you want to come up here next to me? Come on. Alice is seven years old. She was orphaned when her parents died in an influenza epidemic. She's the same age as Lily was when we lost her. Do you think that we can... May we take Alice aside and get acquainted with her pastor? You certainly may. Why don't you go with these nice folks? 